9, 16, 3, 51, 42. Hey there, predictable patrons. Jules here for D News. Randomness is kind of an elusive concept. In theory, we can broadly define something as random if it's unpredictable. Pulling a red or blue marble out of a jar is considered random since there's no practical way to predict which of the two you'll pull out. A roll of the die is also seemingly random, as most people can only guess at the result. And that's kind of important. Randomness matters when it comes to gambling, scientific experiments, military drafts, cryptography, even art. As a society, we use randomness as a method of fairness or impartiality. The idea is that if something random can't be predicted, then it can't be usefully influenced in one direction or another. And it's just up to the universe to make a choice for us. At least, that's the theory. But we're talking about practical randomness, which can range from things that are just hard to measure in advance, like a coin flip, to things that are almost impossible to measure, like which direction a leaf might float as it falls from a tree. To predict that, you would need to know the weight of the leaf, the airflow around it, the temperature, tree height, and basically a million other factors. The more factors involved, the harder it is to take them all into account. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't eventually make a prediction. In 2012, researchers from Poland and Scotland determined a way to predict die rolls. They took into account air viscosity, table friction, and the acceleration of gravity, ran that through a series of complex equations, and compared the result to high-speed camera footage of real dice. Using this, they managed to develop a system to predict what number the die would most likely land on. So, as of 2012, dice are not necessarily random anymore, at least if you're a scientist. This predicting randomness issue is kind of a huge problem. The better math, science, and technology are at assessing prior conditions, the better they'll be at making random things predictable. And in fact, much of what is purported to be random is actually pseudo-random. Here's an example. If you go online, you can quickly find a random number generator. And for most purposes, that's fine. But almost by definition, a computer cannot provide random results. A calculation with all the same original parts must deliver the same result every time. And that's all a computer is, an ultra-powerful number cruncher. So how do computers produce random numbers? Well, there are a few ways, and most involve using an initial number based on some external variable that the computer cannot itself generate. This can be anything, like measuring how long you hold down a letter on your keyboard divided by the current temperature at the top of Mount Everest. Another theoretical source is to measure the radioactive decay of an atom, which at that level, according to quantum theory, is impossible to predict, and thus random. But the same problem exists as with the die rolls. Right now, we're not able to predict atomic decay or the length of time you might hold down the G key while Mount Everest is 14 degrees Fahrenheit. But that doesn't mean we never will. And since those random numbers are still predicated on a fixed value, their randomness is suspect. For cryptologists, this is an enormous problem. To try and solve it, Intel developed RDRAND on their processing chips. These read a source of unpredictable entropy on the processor itself, which is converted into a number to be used as a seed for developing a random number by running it through complex algorithms. But the system was blacklisted by some operating system developers on the basis that it may contain a backdoor for the NSA should Intel give them access. Some have even taken to running RDRAN's output through their own algorithms to prevent the possibility of a third party being able to decrypt the RDRAN output and break its randomness. Even when we seemingly have a source of randomness, it can theoretically be compromised. As we get better and better at measuring the world around us, true randomness becomes more and more elusive. If one day we're able to reliably measure the quantum output of atoms, then we might as well give up on gambling and stop using computer encryption. But for most, pseudo-randomness is more than enough. There are some things we can predict, such as the most likely outcomes of a game, a social situation, or even an election. Check out our video all about that here. If you're eyeballing that last slice of pizza, you're doing game theory to figure out if you should take it. If you're talking to a business partner about your salary, you're using game theory. If you're asking someone out on a date, you're using game theory. It's everywhere. You can distill it into one simple idea. What is the best way to get the ideal payoff with minimal risk? So what do you think? Can anything really be random? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more episodes of D News every day.